Joshua over there. In Austin? That's good. There are cookies and water in the back. If anybody would like one, help yourself, please. Wow, what a good looking group of people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I, 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 no, I, no, not, not, sorry, Julian. Yeah, you're okay, too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, great day, right? No reason not to be? Everybody asks me why I'm always in such a good mood. What do I have to be down about? <laughs> Nothing, as far as I know. Nothing. You don't have to, you can hey, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brian Holly. Like We're going to get started. Uh, thank you again for coming. We know you have a choice what to do on your second Tuesday every month. We appreciate you coming and spending some of that time with us. Uh, I'm a little bit extra excited this month because we've got some really good news to share. Um, not only that, and I'm probably going to get a clap for this. You don't have to listen to me the whole meeting like you usually do. We've got some experts here to, to give you some really uh, expert advice and some material that we know you're going to find very exciting. So... I'm not going to go into that right now, but again, I just want to say thank you. Real quick, I'm going to introduce the team. Um, I'll start up here to the left. We have Garrett Stroud. Those of you who don't know Garrett, uh, he's on our uh, investor relations team. He's the nice gentleman you call and you say, hey, how do I want to get on IMS? I want to change my bank account number. I want to set up an IMS account. I want to fill out an, a subscription agreement. That's the guy that's helping you right there. Julian Alexander, if you don't know, uh, heads our investor relations team. Um, yeah, I, I could go on forever about Julian, so I'm not going to start, because if I start, I can't stop. Um, so <laughs> he caught that. He caught that. Julian does a little bit of everything, but uh, Julian's expertise, not only is he head our investor relations team, but as you know, Julian's one of the, I call him the filter, but he's really an analyzer. You've heard us say forever that we look at, I don't know how many properties we look at a month. It used to be more, now it's still a good bit, but... Bottom line, he's going through and filtering those to see if they pass all the muster. And then he passes them on to Darwin for final inspection to see if it's something we want to pursue. So maybe dozens and dozens, and you know how that whole process works. For those of you who don't know, the gentleman in the back uh, standing at the door, that's Darwin German. <laughs> oh, come on. It was worth a laugh. It's worth a laugh. Our Darwin's fresh back from uh, some time in Colorado. Was it snowing up there, Darwin? Did you go to ski? I wanted to, but it, the, the snow was just... I'm assuming that was not very it's successful done. then. It's okay. Done. Well, anyway, we're glad to have you back. So, anyway, thank you again for being here. Um, uh, before I forget to, uh, Mo is in the control room. We're all live on TV as we speak, being distributed worldwide. But Mo is in there working his magic uh, on the buttons, making the rest of us look good, uh, trying to cover us, uh, some of us up for other things. I want to introduce a couple more people. Ben, would you stand for me, please? Ben Mandelstein, the in the back. Ben is, for those of you who don't know, you've probably seen him on a couple of videos. You've probably um, been made aware of Ben, but Ben is our most recent co-sponsor. And Ben closed on his property on March the 1st. So he's been through one full month and a few days, right, Ben? Yeah. Any exciting thing you want to say about it, or has it been overwhelming? Is it? Uh, we fully replaced. Yeah. It's hard. Sometimes it's hard to say when the property manager called me and said we had a fire. Very minor. Um, th you know what I'm thinking. Okay, one unit, ten units. What it? It was just on a stairwell. It was not even interior. Scorched a few of the boards up on the soffit. Thank God and they put it out real quickly. So, um, you know, fortunately the renter had insurance, and you know how that process works. Thank you, Ben, for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, Anand, would you stand, please, if you don't mind? Anand Dupadier. Uh, for those of you who don't know Anand, he is uh, our, our uh, really our first co-sponsor since we had the co-sponsor program. 
Well, I know, but we really, really wasn't called co-sponsor when I was involved. But Onan's property is Southwest uh, in uh, in Euless, and uh, congratulations, just sent out its first uh, distribution uh, in uh, in March, at the end of March. So looking forward to continued great things there at Southwest. But thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Am I missing anybody? I mean, everybody's special. Don't get me wrong. But anyway, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Real quickly, I'm gonna. I'm just going to, well, I'm going to say welcome, but I'm going to ask Garrett to come up. Garrett's got a quick announcement that he wants to make, so I'm going to let him do that, and then we'll get started with the meeting. Cool, Garrett. Hello. Hello. Okay. So some of you uh, might know, or some of you might not know, um, I'm Darwin's stepson, and, uh, you know, know him very well, and you're probably wondering why there are cards in front of you with a pin. Oh, my bad. Um, so, uh if you have any personal questions that you want to direct towards Darwin to know him a little bit better outside of real estate and business in general, um, we're going to do a podcast relatively soon just to, as a fun little thing. But if you guys have any questions, just feel free to write them down and meet me afterwards and just hand it to me. So just want to make that announcement. Thank you. Thank you, Garrett. I'm going to ask one other question real quick because I'm super excited about how many of you have been to this building yet? Okay, how many of investors in this building? Okay, awesome, right? Did, how, did, did any of you see it before it was remodeled? Yeah, absolutely. So, Susan, is there a difference? <laughs> it's, it's obviously been great, but we're proud of the building. Welcome to the, this is the Darwin German Training Center. <laughs> the office is just behind you, and not only where DGR people sit, but our Darcorp people. As you know, Darcorp is our management company that manages all of our property. So. Great things going on back there, but we're proud of it. If anybody wants to take a tour, we'd love to take, uh, take you and show you around. Basically, if you can see it outside, and I mean outside this room, if you can see it, it's been touched. It's repainted. The flooring's new. Most of the lighting is new. Your, all of your woodwork in the lobby, the furniture, the, again, the, the murals. I love the murals. So Anyway, welcome to Valley Center, um, and uh, we'll, we'll get started here. Real quick, I'm going to go through the agenda. Again, welcome. The big topic for tonight is understanding cost segregation. How many of you came just for that? Okay, Brian, you hear that? I, I'm not here for it. Uh, by the way, for those of you, we're going to introduce another Brian tonight, so don't get confused. But Brian Bigham is here with Madison Specs, and uh, is a great partner. Madison Specs is a great partner with us. They do all of our cost segregation analysis and studies for us, and it's uh, you're going to learn tonight why it's such a good thing. Um, Darwin's then going to come up and do an update on current opportunities, and we're going to talk a little bit about Frankfurt Station, which is, I uh, may have Julian come up too, but we're just about out of room on that. So if you're interested in Frankfurt Station, please give Garrett or Julian a call. So I think we're just under a million dollars left uh, in that raise, and that'll be closing out as well. Uh, one of the bonuses you're going to get tonight, boom, I didn't mean that as a, as a pun, Brian, because he's going to talk about bonus uh, depreciation. One of the bonuses, he ran some analysis for me today. I asked him this morning, and he did it, to talk about how the cost segregation and the bonus depreciation is going to impact the Frankfurt Station investment. So you'll get some really good information out of that. Then we'll have a QA and a and we'll answer any questions that you might have. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Brian to come up. Again, Brian Bigham with Madison Specs. And as he will, pr he probably won't say this because he's too nice, but there are times when I'll call him on a Thursday and need something on a, on a Monday, and he gets it. But it's really good information because we have to have it to give the information to you. So, Brian, without further ado, I'm going to let you go through the cost segregation. Thank you very much for, your, uh, for being here tonight. Absolutely. Okay, can everybody hear me with the mic on? Perfect. Uh, i got to check. Uh, this is you know, one of the few uh, in-person events that we've been able to do this year. i got to make sure I've got pants on and everything. So, <laughs> you know, it's because Zoom, you do enough Zoom calls and webinars, it's, you know, business on top, party on the bottom. So, <laughs> All right, so everybody's here Tuesday night. Everybody's ready to have some fun, talk about some taxes, because that's what everybody wants to do on Tuesday nights. So, uh, yeah, basically, I'm, I'm going to be trying to tell you guys everything there is to know about why the tax benefits on investing in real estate is such a wonderful thing. Uh, starting out, I want to change your mindsets. Okay, It's not about coming in and putting your money in and making money. It's not about investing and, and walking away with millions and millions of dollars. No, no, no. It's about how much can you keep at the end of the day. All right? And that's the whole concept. So 
quick overview. We always have to do that, you know, chapter summaries. So we're going to talk about depreciation, cost segregation, benefits of a cost seg study, bonus depreciation, who should do it, who shouldn't do it. Uh, you know, what's a real estate professional? Why is that so important to know? And I'll give you some actual case studies and an example of, um, you know, how to see your investment before you actually put it into the deal and why that's beneficial. And then a little bit about my company, you know, the uh, shameless plug of myself. So depreciation. All right, so what is depreciation? Uh, another thing is I love metaphors. I'm a huge metaphor guy. So I always I like to use the um, you know, metaphor with depreciation as wear and tear. So think about it like this, iPhone. I, I don't have the original, but if I did, it would be a much better example. So I have the original iPhone 3 with a cracked screen. I've been using it for you know, five plus years, whatever. And I decide, you know what? Today I'm gonna go trade it in for the brand new iPhone that just came out go to the store and I say, look, I want to trade in this old, nasty, cracked, gross iPhone that it's, doesn't even work, the battery lasts all of two seconds, and I want the brand new one without having to put any money down. Do you think they would do that? Maybe, if you work it good enough. So the concept is, why can you not do that? Because of the wear and tear of that iPhone. Over the years, it depreciates in value. It's the life expectancy is far gone. So it goes down in value with an everything else, all these new things coming up in value and taking the place of all the old things. So that's depreciation in a nutshell. So we're going to talk about, there's two different kind of um, asset classes. There's a 39 year for commercial property, 27 and a half year for residential. Why 27 and a half? I don't know, two guys got together, one said 28, one said 27, they just met in the middle. But for residential property, we're gonna be talking about 27 and a half years, and I'll explain what that is in just a moment. The concept is, what can you do to maximize the tax benefits for real estate property? And that's where cost segregation comes in, which is a terrible name. Use accelerated depreciation, because that's what it really is. All right, the concept is, we are taking all of the physical assets on site of the property, and we are reclassifying them and moving them to what their life expectancy is. Yeah. Now, there, this is an example of uh, straight line depreciation. Straight line depreciation is if you're investing in any deal right now that's not doing cost segregation, this is what you're doing right now. You buy a property for a million dollars, take out land. Uh, it could be 15%, it could be 5%, in New York or California, it could be upwards of 30 to 50%. You have to take out the land value out of the purchase price because if a tornado came and knocked the entire building off, the land will still be there. So you cannot depreciate the land. So when you take out the land, that leaves you with what's called a depreciable basis, 850,000 850, on this example. So if you are not doing cost seg, you're just doing straight line depreciation, you are going to get $30,909 every single year in tax losses, which doesn't sound bad, right? But think about the concept of you are you know, raising rents, you're uh, forcing appreciation, you're making it, you know, the curb appeal much better. You're getting more and more money every single year. That 30,909 does not cut it. So what does cost segregation really do? So what we're doing is by taking the assets that are on site, that are physically on site, when you purchase the property, we're simply reclassifying them. Instead of, you know, all the assets over the next 27 and a half years being averaged in, we're moving them to where they're supposed to be. We're not adding more, we're not deleting, we're literally just moving them where they're supposed to be. By doing that, we're front-loading all that depreciation for you. So you can take full advantage of all those losses now instead of waiting 30 years from now. So what does that do for you? I mean, it accelerates your depreciation deductions produces your significant uh, non-cash deductions, and it's reclassifying, which gives you a clean depreciation schedule to work with. Your CPA loves us. This is a quick example. What's the difference? Red line is your straight line depreciation. So that shows you that you buy a property year one, every single year, these are losses for you. The exact same every single year. Around year two or year three, your income starts coming up like this. Gosh, where are all the losses? They're not there. They're not, they're not going to help you in the long run. So with cost segregation, 
we simply reclassify and put all of the assets where they're supposed to be. By doing that, we're pulling from future years all the blue, and we're putting it up front. We're front-loading it. You guys, this is a time value of money. You're getting all of these massive amounts of losses now instead of waiting later. That's it. Offset all of your income. Now, when I say asset classes, I was like, I keep saying that. I wanted to make sure and explain that. There are basically three categories of asset, assets in every property, and we're going to stick with multifamily. So when I say five-year property, that's kind of um, your interiors, carpeting, uh, ceiling fans, millwork, you know, things on the inside, specialty electric. Uh, basically, every unit you can think of, think of the inside. Think of all the stuff you're going to be tearing out and making it nicer. All of that is actually being able to write off the day of purchase and it depreciates over five years. 15 years is your exterior land improvements. Things like carports, signage, retaining walls. Like I, I literally, my, my wife and I cannot drive by a property now without me starting to point out things. And she says, just say it's pretty. I said, no, no, you know, I think that's five years, that's 15 years. The third category is 27 and a half year. That's the big one. That's the um, structural components, foundations, windows, walls, roofs, things that make up the actual structure of the building. So what we're simply doing is moving everything to where it's supposed to be, five year, one through five, 15 year, one through 15, 27 and a half year, one through 27. So you don't have to wait for your five year property for the next 20 years, you get it now. That's the key. And that's what it does. I mean, it reduces your tax liability. It increases your cash flow because you don't have to pay the government. One thing about me is my arch enemy is the IRS. They're my nemesis. I love my job because I get to go up against them every single day. It is a time value of money and bonus appreciation is such a hot topic. We'll go over that in just a second, but it is extremely necessary to offset massive amounts of income for yourself. Okay, I put a disclaimer in here. So I want to show a video. I'm, I hope it plays, but I want to always say that I don't try to get into any political talks. I'm not on the left or on the right. I won't tell you if I'm red or blue. If you ask me who I voted for, I'll just lie and say Kanye West, okay? <laughs> so I just wanted to let that know before I go to the next slide. I just, the whole concept of what I do is I want to make sure and utilize every bit of new tax laws and how to work it and loophole it and you name it. I want to make sure that we don't pay the government a dime. Everybody remember this? Oh, there were so many video clips to choose from. I don't know if it's going to play. Nope. No worries. No worries. It's an older clip, obviously. So quick you know, nutshell of what this was. She gets after him. He doesn't pay a dime in federal income tax. You know, this, this millionaire, billionaire in real estate who wants to be president has not paid anything in, in, in income tax. What's that about? So instead of saying, you know, he says I'm smart, he also explains in this clip that because of the laws that people like you pass, I take massive amounts of deductions and depreciation on all of my properties. A sitting president who is a real estate mogul, or a former sitting president who's a real estate mogul, doesn't pay anything on income tax on his tax return, and why? Because of depreciation, because of all the deductions, because of all the, the tax laws that can you know, offset all that income. All right, so I'm sitting here, you know, listening to, to him talk and say, all right, help the American people, you know, kind of put your money where your mouth is. What are you going to do for us? And that's where he came up with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, um, you've got to remember this date, all right, September 27th, 2017. That's the magic date, 9-27-17. Everybody remember that, 9-27-17. Any commercial or income producing property purchased after that date is eligible for bonus depreciation. All right. Tax Cuts and Jobs Act did a lot more than just bonus depreciation, but that is the big topic for real estate investors now to talk about. So what is bonus depreciation? All of that five-year property that I was talking about, years one through five, all that 15-year property, one through 15, we're talking about millions upon millions of dollars in tax deductions, tax depreciation losses you can take in year one. All of it. 
You don't have to wait five years, 15 years. No, it is now, you're able to take it in year one. Massive amounts of depreciation go ahead. And the cool thing about it is there's, this is all based on you know, the, the IRS calendar year. If you purchase a property December 31st, 5 p.m., 2020, you could do bonus depreciation and actually take millions of dollars of losses for 2020 taxes. That's what's so cool about this. Anything that's under a useful life of 20 years. Now remember, I said there were three categories. Five year, 15 year, and 27 and a half year. So the key is that 27 and a half year category stays consistent, one through 27 and a half. By doing that, that basically means you can take all that five and 15 year depreciation today. Next year, you're like, I'm gonna be out of depreciation. No, you still have another category that's just sitting there. It's gonna keep coming. You keep getting those losses. Sounds too good. You cannot do it buy and sell in the same year. You can't do bonus depreciation. That's the only downside. All right, I put this up. It's just a bunch of numbers of gobbledygook, but the concept is bonus depreciation will phase out. So this was put into practice in 2017. It actually starts to go away at the end of 2022. It doesn't go away completely. It goes from 100% that you're allowed to take year one down to 80%. And then the next year, 60%. Next year, 40, 20, and so on until it's gone. All right, and surprisingly, that's around an election year too when they started doing that. So use it now before it's gone. So who should use it? Everybody. For goodness sakes, guys. Individuals, LLCs, corporations, partnerships, you, you name it. If you own any or invest in any real estate that's producing income for you, you should be doing cost segregation, no matter how big, no matter how small. All right, I, I, I was uh, you know, telling him earlier that I've, I've done properties as big as 70-story skyscrapers. The smallest property I've ever done is one half of a duplex. How many units is that? It made sense for the client because he, he said, I don't, I don't want to pay $5,000 in, in income tax this year. Okay, I mean, if it makes sense for you, here you go. Done. Okay, active real estate professional. Quick synopsis, guys. What is an active real estate professional? It's exactly, it's the very first word. Everything becomes active. If you guys have active gains, you have active losses. If you have passive gains right now and you're an active real estate professional, it's switched. They are now active gains. Active gains, active losses. You can literally offset any loss that you have, you can offset any gains. If you have W-2 income, you can offset it. Gains from real estate, you can offset. If you had a garage sale and you actually told the IRS how much you made from it, you can offset that with these losses. In order to meet this category, which is just a checkbox on your IRS form, by the way. You do have to meet two, not either or, but two categories. 750 hours a year involved in real estate. Trading, transaction, closing, underwriting, education. If you guys are here for an hour, we'll just say two hours. There's two hours towards your time. And the other one is 50% or more of your income has to become from real estate. All right? Funny thing is, the 750 hours is actually a harder one to meet for most people, because you ha do have to document it. There are little loopholes, there are tricks, and I'm happy to talk about them, but it might take a little long than this presentation. I'm happy to talk to you afterwards about it, about how to marry, jo marry joint filing. You can actually make yourself an active real estate professional without being one. Is there, what, is, what do they call the paper ruling, whatever it is? Mm -hmm. That if you own four units or more, then that counts as being an active real estate professional? It's all based on the income. But yeah, if, if you are, let's say for instance, this, this spouse right here. If you are married and you file jointly and your spouse owns or manages, that's, her, that's their primary source of income, then absolutely, you're, you count as an active real estate professional. you own a fourplex and she's taking care of that, her income counts on that fourplex, and even if it's only $1,000 for the year, the difference. Um, then that's most of her income for that, so she counts as a real estate professional, that's correct. allowing you to, allowing the spouse to write off 
any depreciation for against their active income. That's absolutely right. It doesn't matter if, if the other spouse makes a million dollars as a doctor or, a, or, or tech guru, it doesn't make any difference. If 50% or more of your spouse's income is from real estate, 100% makes you an active real estate professional. But if you cannot qualify as an active real estate professional, there's, <laughs> there's still good news. As a passive real estate professional, meaning if by putting your money into passively into real estate and generating income from it, you can still offset passive income. So your passive losses now offset any passive income with a cap of 25,000. And a lot of times when I, when I ask, you know, why the 25, I've read all about it. I think it's mainly because if you go beyond that threshold, you should actually look into becoming an active real estate professional. All right, so when's the best time to do cost setting? Ah, any time, guys. I mean, if you've owned the property at least since 1986, because that's when cost segregation started coming on, you know, you, you do it as soon as you acquire the property. So we can come in and actually capture all the assets as they sit when you bought the property and then give you, you know, your, your depreciation right then and there. After you put in a renovation, an improvement in the property, let's say you're putting in a 500K of CapEx into it. That's all additional assets you're putting in. So we should be able to immediately get you all that accelerated write-off. On a newly constructed property, this actually makes sense. I mean, if you, if you just place a brand new multifamily property into service, right, and you know right off the bat it's gonna be more losses than income, still, take all of those losses and offset other income, offset passive losses, offset active loss, or active gains, everything. Look back study. If you've, if this is the first time you're hearing about cost segregation, you've had a property for you know, more than a year. Like you can still do cost segregation on it. All we're going to be doing is uh, taking into account how much depreciation you've already taken and then pull the remaining from the future years to now. So it's all doable, guys. But there's a, there's a part that's missing. All right? I mean, what about when you go under contract on a property? Right, how do we utilize the depreciation, the accelerated depreciation for that? That's where we came up with the individual depreciation benefit. Simple calculator. I'll walk you through it real quick. $10 million purchase tag. Take out the land, which leaves you with an $8.5 million depreciable basis. Okay? You always take into account on a syndication the LPGP split, the limited, you know, limited partners, general partners split percentage. With a raise of $3.5 million, you can actually calculate how much your individual investment will net you in tax depreciation losses before you put a dime in the property. You put in $100,000 with 35% uh, cost segregation, that gives you 2.86% ownership of that LLC that's buying the property. That $100,000 investment will get you 77,000 plus in bonus depreciation. That's $77,000 in losses for this year. But well, let's say you don't need it all this year. Spread it out. Okay. Typical formula. You own the property five or six years. $100,000 investment, $106,000 in tax losses. It's over dollar for dollar, guys. Love it. Take that, IRS. All right, so let's do a case study. This is, this is one of my clients. This is actually one of my, my first years learning into this. I came into this. Contacted this gentleman. He's an active real estate professional. All right, this was his eighth purchase. It was a $28.5 million property in Fort Worth. All right, without cost segregation, he was basically doing $932,000 a year in losses on this property. That's a lot. I mean, that's almost a million dollars, right? He has eight other properties around the same number. He was paying taxes out the booty for so many years. When I came to him, I gave him a projection on this property. He went ahead and signed off on it. Let's give it a shot. We did the full report. This is what we found. We took out 2.85 million in land because we found that it was only 10% land value. That left us with a basis of 25.65 million. 65% of that was that structural component, 27 and a half year property. 11% 15 year, 24% five year. That basically gave him 
$8.895 million. So he called, me the other, he called me and said, hey, Brian, I want you to do seven other properties I have. He pays no taxes. Um, he actually, we've done podcasts and webinars together. He actually likes to show his tax return at negative four hundred, negative five hundred thousand dollars. He pays zero taxes, and he's a millionaire. All right. Over the over the time doing some of these, I like to add different things. So these are some of the questions that I've always been asked, and I want to make sure and uh, put them to rest. There are always questions trying to find out what's the downside. My building is too old to benefit from a cost seg report. That's false. If you buy the property today, your depreciation schedule starts today. It makes no difference if the building is 100 years old, 1,000 years old, it makes no difference. Ownership changes hands, that's when your depreciation schedule starts. All right, if the building's 100 years old, great. You get brand new depreciation today, and I will tell you about the historic tax credit. It's a good thing. Your CPA does all the depreciation for the property. That's true and false. So your CPA is the one that we will hand the report to to actually put the numbers in. They can do the depreciation for you, whether straight line or cost seg, but I like to use that metaphor, guys. It's kind of like uh, throwing darts at a dartboard, a guesstimate. Right? You want an engineer-based study, engineer-based study, an appraiser-based study. You want things that people actually look for, not guess on. Doing a cost seg will red flag me for an IRS audit said the word audit. Completely false. Matter of fact, this is actually, uh, you, they want you to do a cost seg report. Why? Because it, it actually shows them what's on site, a clean depreciation schedule. It allows you to show why you're taking a maximum amount of deductions. All that depreciation, they, you have physical evidence now. Here it is. I'm not lying. There it is. In your face. And then the dreaded word, recapture. So anybody know what re everybody know what recapture is or novice? <laughs> so recapture is is one of those things that everybody talks about is the main reason why they don't want to do cost segregation. So the only way to avoid it is by selling for less or die. And nobody wants to do either one of those. All right. So in a nutshell, I'm going to do a, a ten thousand foot example of what recapture the why you need to look at it from a different angle. Remember, I'm telling you to change your mindsets. So I, I won't go into an example of all the tax basis and the cost basis and everything at the end. This is just the final numbers to work from, okay? If you were to do straight line depreciation and at, when you go to full cycle on a property, when you go to sell, you took $100,000, that's, that's a basis for you. That's how much you owe back on depreciation recapture. So depreciation that you've taken during time of ownership, you do have to pay a certain portion back. That's just the way it is. That's been law, tax law, for quite some time now. So if you did straight line depreciation, you took on $100,000, the maximum payback is 25% of what you've taken. So $100,000, 25%, which means you owe the IRS $25,000 when you go to sell. Now again, I'm a tax strategist, guys. I would hate that, so talk to me after this. I will tell you why you should not have to pay. With cost segregation, that usually triples the amount of depreciation you take during ownership. So instead of 100,000, you took 300,000 during ownership, which means when you go to pay back, you owe $75,000 back. But here's what I want you guys to look at. This is why I say change your mindset. It's not about how much you're paying at the end. It's about how much you're keeping during. 25% on regular straight line depreciation means you really enjoyed $75,000 in five years of tax losses? That's not bad. What about cost segregation? During ownership, you pay back seventy-five dollars at sale, but $225,000, that's scot-free. That's, I mean, that's yours. That's how much you did not have to pay during ownership. Love it. What are you going to do with that money? Put it into another property. Take those losses, offset that seventy-five dollars you owe. It's great, guys. It becomes a million dollar game. Okay, I want to always put this in. So this is actually taken from what's called the Cost Segregation Audit Techniques Guide. Say it 10 times fast. 
So this is actually a great read. I mean, you should put this on your nightstand or put you out like that. All right, this is actually a checklist for my company. What we do is everything the IRS wants to see. The, uh, this is in the IRS handbook, Cost Segregation Audit Techniques Guide. And like I said, they want you to do this. I won't go over all of these because it will put you to sleep and it's Tuesday night and everybody wants to hear about taxes, right? But um, it's basically telling you, yes, do it. If your property's making money, do it. Now here's my shameless plug. All right, so Madison Specs. We're basically, uh, you know, that's all we do is cost segregation. So we're under an umbrella. That umbrella is Madison Commercial Real Estate. Under that umbrella, you've got Madison Specs, you've got Madison Title, you've got Madison 1031 Exchange, you've got pretty much all the back office that, that you need. That, that means that basically what that's saying is we're in the market, guys. Have a question about something that's com related to real estate at all? Let me know. We've done thousands upon thousands of these studies. You know, we've saved billions of dollars in, in tax savings. And when it comes to audits, if you do get audited, not for having cost seg done, but for other reasons, and the IRS wants to see that cost seg report, we will represent you 100% free of charge because we have not had any change in audit. Matter of fact, in the last 20 years, I think we were 14 for 14, no change. Because we do everything they want to see. Oh yeah, and then we've, I just recently put this in. So we decided that you know, with COVID and everything, we're, we're gonna make adjustments. We're gonna make it work for everybody. So if, if it makes your tenants uncomfortable to have an engineer actually physically site visit, we'll do a virtual one. That's completely acceptable by the IRS because we're still taking physical evidence that we were there, that we're capturing all the assets and we'll make it nice. If you have a management company, we'll make it nice. Send them an Amazon gift card, cookie, water, you name it. We just, we want you to get this done, guys. Oh, already went over all this. And that's it. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Thank you. We're gonna go into question and answers. I know many of you have questions. I would just ask you to indulge me, please. Um, I should have made an announcement at the beginning. If anybody needs a restroom, it's right outside the hall. If you'll go out this door and to your left, take a left and then a left. And if you'll look on the back board, the uh, restroom code is 521. If you forget that, it's on the backboard back there. Um, we're going to go into some question and answer session. Uh, and if you, uh, if you would allow me to raise your hand, please. And I'm going to bring, because we are streaming this to a lot of people online as well, uh, uh, virtual attendees, so we want them to hear the question. So if you'll let me know, I'll bring the uh, microphone to you. So let's open it up to cost segregation questions. Thank you. Tell me again, what was the 9-27-17 date specifically referencing? Yep. So any property, any commercial property that's purchased after that date commercial. is eligible for bonus depreciation. If you guys have bought a property before that date, you know, like August of 2017, you cannot take that 100% bonus depreciation. You can still do cost segregation, but you can't take that big amount up front. That's all. Okay, who else? coming so what determines the um, average 15% difference on the uh, land yeah. value I've you know we've we basically documentation um, you know I've I, I've used county appraisal districts information you know if it if it's a primary market you're probably looking at around 15 for Texas around 15% land value to the actual purchase price uh, secondary markets about 10% and you know tertiary markets maybe I've seen as low as 3% honestly really it's all about documentation that's how you can determine it anything you take out of land you put into that depreciable basis guys it's wonderful so always know what your land value is okay next question all right. then I have one <laughs> I have one if nobody else does. Could you talk real quickly, Brian, if you don't mind? I know we put a slide together. Um, we're currently have an offering, Frankfurt Station, that's available to investors, as I told you at the beginning. It's, uh, we're getting pretty close to the end, so if you're interested, uh, reach out and let us know. But I asked Brian to put a little information together, and if you would, Brian Darwin, would you join us up front, too, as we talk about this? Um, talk about how 
this cost segregation and bonus depreciation specifically affects uh, Frankfurt Station. Oh yeah, absolutely. So this is kind of a, a shot of that individual depreciation benefit I was talking about, right? We did this this morning. Yeah, so this is as fresh as it comes. So $37 million purchase price. All right, we're just, we're, we're estimating 15% for land. Now that could go down, which gives you a $31.45 million basis with the split percentage, 80-20, and the raise, which is awesome lending, by the way. It's pretty impressive. $8.25 million raise, a $100,000 investment will get you, where are we? $84,000 plus in bonus depreciation for 2021. That's $84,000 plus in losses by putting in a $100,000 investment. Okay, if you don't need bonus depreciation, no problem. You wanna spread it out. Let's say you, I mean, you wanna get it across all of your portfolios. Maybe this is the only investment you're putting in. You just wanna take advantage of you know, the trending upwards rent income and everything you're getting. No problem. That $100,000, $123,000 over the course of five years. $123,000 of tax losses spread out over five years of ownership for that 100, that's over dollar for dollar that you're putting in, you're getting back in losses. How is it possible? It's all based on the lending, it's all based on the property itself, it's all based on basically all the number. I mean, numbers, for me, they don't lie. I'm a number cruncher by heart and I love what I do. So it's a great property, great property. And, f and for a 2020 build, it's only gonna get better, guys. So who determines um, how we spread the depreciation? Does Darwin and you know, does his decision or the decision of Darwin German determines who, how every investor, how every LP applies it or can yep. each individual? So the, the, the cool thing about this is with cost segregation being done on the property as a whole, every single person that's investing in it files their own tax returns, their own individual tax returns. You have the option. Do you want to do bonus or do you want to spread it out? You and your CPA are the only ones that can determine that. Darwin and his team will give you the K-1s. He'll give you those monstrous losses on your K-1s, and it's up to you and your CPA how you want to work them. But does it. anybody not understand what this is? It's a very dry subject. No offense, Matt. No, I'm um, it's a very dry subject. Try to make it fun. It's extremely <laughs> important. Okay, does anybody, anybody brave enough to say they don't understand? Okay, okay, well then you did a great job. Okay, one person. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me put this in a different perspective, okay? Like you said, it's what you keep, okay? By accelerating that depreciation, like you said, if you invest $100,000 in just Frankfurt Station, and we do this on all our properties, there's an $84,000 tax loss. Now, when you get your K-1, it's gonna show in there that you lost $84,000. Well, minus whatever, yep. whatever you made on cash flow but you're gonna have a tax loss, okay? Some people look at that and go, oh my God, I lost all this money. No, that's a paper loss. That's all it is is paper. That paper loss, if you make $85,000 all year, that's all you make was $85,000, it's gonna say income, $85,000. Loss, $84,000. So even though you made $80,000, you're paying zero in taxes. So another way to look at this is if you're in a, let's just pick a 30% 30, 30 tax bracket. Who knows? I don't even know what the tax brackets are anymore. So 84,000 times 30%. Uh, so you've got about a, what, $28,000 $28, in cash that you're saving off of your taxes. And if That's you don't use it. This year. Yes, ma'am. So Hold on a second. Hold on a second, Susan. Does that pertain to your entire income or just your real estate income? He was talking about, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm no. interpreting this, it. dumbing it Please down do. so that I can understand it. That goes against your passive losses. Okay, he had some other things in there. Real estate losses. Whatever your passive losses are. If you have, if you have gains on stocks, stocks are a passive gain. That's right. If you have other, other passive income, then that can offset any of that except for his example, that if you're a real estate professional. So, let's take you for example, okay? More than half of your income is coming from real estate, right? Okay, that makes you 
an active real estate professional, correct? That's absolutely right. Okay, so that is active, you've got two buckets, active and passive. Active is your W-2, whatever you're doing for a job. Your passive losses are just exactly that, your investments you make. But now that turns you into an active real estate investor, so any other active income you have. So Bonnie and Cheryl, I'll pick on you guys for a minute, okay? Cheryl, if she counts all of the income from the passive income, uh, and she makes more than 50%, then all of those things are active losses against the massive amounts Monty makes. Okay, so, so she's now counted as the real estate professional. She can write that any losses, that $85,000 loss, if he only made $85,000 this year on his active income, they pay no tax. You follow that, this, this is ex a boring subject, but exciting when you get down to actually like looking how much goes in your pocket off of this. That's why you want to do it. And even if you said, oh, you know what, I, I can't use those losses. Just like he said, you can carry those forward. You can allocate right. that however you want to allocate that with your CPA. Okay, correct? Okay. And so you can allocate that. But even if you do, like for example me, I want to take it all now. Now if I have too many losses, great. Let's carry it forward toward my income next year. Yeah or the year after that, or the year after that, okay? And most people want to take it now because of time value of money, okay? You'd rather have that loss now. You'd rather have a dollar today than a dollar next year, okay? So that's why this is so exciting, is because even though you get an $84,000 loss on Frankfurt Station, you're not gonna make $85,000 year one. I'm sorry, we're not that good, um, but at least if it's just your only investment, your only investment like that, you'll still get that loss, and you can carry forward whatever else it is on that one gain if it's just your only property. But most people in here are in more than one property, so that, that does well. Brian, I've, I've got two um, questions coming from uh, folks watching on the internet. Hmm? One of them is, can they go backwards with the loss? Instead of carrying it forward, can they amend their, their returns from the previous year? It is, po it is possible to amend the tax returns and apply the depreciation, but it also comes down to is it pl when was it placed in the service? So if you close on a property this year and you want to apply those depreciation losses to something that okay. closed last year, you cannot do that. And then the follow-up question is if I qualify for the deduction um, for taking it, but I'm investing via a qualified plan, an IRA, self-directed, right. how, how can that or how would you find right. that? So the key to that is, that is actually because you're investing with a separate entity into the property, those losses do not, are not allocated to you. They're allocated through the entity. Now it's not to say that the IRA is gonna take those losses and use them for their own personal benefit. That basically just means that you are technically investing tax-free, so you don't get to utilize the tax losses on other income. And that would qualify also for someone uh, investing through it via an entity that's not an IRA. Correct, like a, a realist, a REIT, or a, you Well, know, no, I'm just oh. saying, let's say somebody, uh, uh, they invest through an LLC, a pass-through. Correct, a pass-through, yeah, pass-through. Pa It'll still pass, pass through, through then, still through that okay. LLC. It's just the non-qualified plans because you're already tax-free another way. Correct. Right. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we got Chris, one right here. got a microphone, Sorry. they'll come. <laughs> you hear me? Um, so for a deal like Village Condos, we're going to have a refinance after one year. Um, so that's a non-taxable event. So, so you, you show like what our tax basis is um, and the amount that we have left in the deal. So can you maybe talk to what it would look like for a deal that has that refi? Um, so how, your your basis is even lower, but you've claimed like much more losses right. um, in, in comparison to your basis in the deal. Yeah, so the nice thing about refinancing, guys, is it's tax-free. You're getting your money back tax-free because it's the capital you put into it. It doesn't matter how much you refinance, whether it's cash out, whether it's getting better terms, you know, whatever. The cost segregation is based on the original purchase price. It makes no difference what the new, act, you know, the new amount is or, or anything like that. Because we did it on the original price, that's what the number's going to stick with. The only thing that you can change is if you put improvements in, you can take a second cost seg study on just the improvements, the renovations, the rehab you put into it. That's refilling the bucket of losses for everybody, for everybody. I mean, it's not just for 
you know, general partners. It's for every individual passive investor, guys. And what, you know, to piggyback off of what Darwin was saying, it rolls over. Whatever you don't use, it rolls over. And also, as a passive investor, I really think it benefits them tremendously because, uh, again, metaphors. Think of it as a dam. That dam has got all of these losses piling up on one side, and they trickle over to offset the income. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays there. When you need it, you can actually utilize it. Wonderful. Next question over there. Yeah, just question for a friend. How's that? Um, <laughs> things like pension or like you're making your withdrawals from your IRA or whatever, mm -hmm. how does that line up with your real estate income sure. in terms of qualifying for a professional? Yeah, so the, the key is if you're, if you're pulling money out of your IRA to invest into, you know, real estate, doesn't matter what type of real estate, income producing real estate. No, just pulling out in general. Just pulling out in general, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna have to, you're gonna owe money or taxes on that pullout. But if you're an active real estate professional, you can offset with these losses to offset that taxes. Everything becomes active. It makes no difference. Again, use the garage sale you know, example. It doesn't make any, if, if you owe taxes on it, it is considered active. Love it. Yes, sir. Yes, so how do closing costs and uh, renovations uh, fit into this picture? Okay, so closing costs uh, are actually taken out of it. So this is basically the, the acquisition of the property itself, the building, right? All of the closing costs, those are not in the equation because they're not hard physical assets. But they're, they're eaten up anyway, right? Yeah. They're, they're not oh, part yeah, of the no. cost segregation. Yeah, they're, they're not part of the cost segregation. They're still part of the deduction, but they're yeah. not part of the cost segregation. Absolutely, and what was the second question? I'm sorry. Oh, renovation. Yeah, so that's that's the nice thing about this. It's what we call double dipping without, you know, taking full advantage of all the uh, depreciation benefits. Any improvements you put in, whether it's a dollar or ten million dollars, any improvements you're putting in, those are actual physical things you're putting onto the property. So because cost segregation covers the physical assets, why not take a second study on the new things you're putting in after you've already done the the original stuff? The nice thing about it is. When we take, do the original cost segregation study, you're taking care of everything on the property. It doesn't matter if you're throwing it away. If you're literally saying that carpet is yellow, black, gross, everything is bad about it, but I'm gonna write it off, you absolutely can and you should. Because you're gonna tear it out, but because you, it's included in that original purchase price, why not take full advantage of the taxes on it? You write the book twice, you write like the old one, but yep. the new one. Absolutely. And the nice thing about the improvements is when you're, the more you're putting in, it's, it's mainly physical assets you're putting in that are five and 15 year. So you're talking about 50, 60, 70% of what you're putting in, you can write off. So put in a million dollars, write off 700,000 for every investor in the LLC. Again, it trickles down. Everybody gets a piece of the pie. We, uh, we have one question from the audience. Um, we talk about carrying over losses. How far can you, or how long can you carry it over? How far can you go out? Yeah, so the new, the, the carriage, I mean, it's five years now. Um, it could change, but it's a, one of those hurry up and wait kind of scenarios. <laughs> Sorry, uh, just one question. Uh, what The recapture rate is 25%, mm -hmm. but that is the max, right? It could be lower, yes. your income limit. Yeah, I didn't want to go too much into detail now in case it was a little bit more confusing. My example sometimes is a little bit more on a higher end, but yes, 25% is the max. And I'll give you a great example. I have yet to see a single person go full cycle and pay 25%, the max amount. The most I've ever seen is 21%, and that was a bad deal he basically bought and sold within 13 months. The other one was less than 1%. It's all based on, you need to have a real estate savvy CPA. I cannot stress that enough, guys. They're the ones that are gonna work it to the bone for you. And just a second question is, if you already did the cost segregation and then the renovation was done of half a million dollar, can you go back and do the half a million dollar cost segregation again? Absolutely. Oh, all day. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, you <laughs> wanna take is the max amount Yes, sir. Uh, if uh, 
if I was going to invest 100000 in Frankfurt Station, and I'm doing it through a, a uh, IRA rollover, huh? would I be able to use this cost segregation uh, since it's already tax-sheltered money? You won't be able to use it. Now, the, the weird thing about this is you will be allocated that amount, the, the taxes. You will actually be allocated this amount of tax loss. Uh -huh. But you will not be able to utilize it if you're going through your, your IRA. Okay, but if my spouse is, uh, if she qualifies as a, a real estate professional mm -hmm. and we file married jointly, then can we take advantage of that? So I'll tell you what I've, I've seen people do. Uh, right now, if you did it the way, you know, with the IRA, which is a separate entity, uh -huh you're not gonna be able to take advantage of the taxes. However, what I've seen other people do, I wouldn't, I mean, talk to your CPA. Again, I'm not a CPA. I'm, I'll give you some tax advice, but I'm not a CPA. They've pulled that money out of their IRA and the tax that they're gonna have to pay on pulling it out, they can actually offset it with this, the losses because it's technically considered active real estate. Yeah, that was gonna be my next question. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. But talk to your CPA and please okay. guys, I, promise you, you need to get a real estate savvy CPA if you're, one, if you're in real estate investing. Cannot stress it enough. Uh, how do you determine the tax on the recapture? So again, it all comes down to your CPA. Um, when, you, you know, when you go to sell, it's also based on how much depreciation you've taken during ownership. Uh, do that with the actual selling price. UBIT put together, tax base, it, there's tons of stuff. I don't want to bore you all too much, but there's lots of calculations you actually put into place in order to determine how much you would owe back. But it's, if you're putting a reclassified five-year property and you go past five years, why should you pay it back? I mean, that's the concept, right? Life expectancy. So that's, where, that's why I said it's, not, it's capped at 25%. You don't have to pay 25%. It's, that's why your CPA really needs to work with you guys, okay? Not necessarily, no. no, no. Fair mark, it's, it's always based on how much you've taken and how much you're selling. That's, that's like the big, two big key pieces. But the max is 25%. Oh, so max just use is that as a max and you're good to go. If you're happy yeah. with 25, then you're gonna be thrilled with whatever you get. Absolutely, and that's why the, with the IRS guys, it's all about the wording, right? So when they say the maximum is 25% and then the maximum is 25%, that basically means, oh, so it can be below the maximum because that's the highest it'll be. Okay, can anybody understand why I was so excited about this? Yep, anybody find this useful? Amen, amen. Brian, I want to thank you again. Um, not cutting you off, sorry, but I, now you can see why I was said before, when we started that Brian and, and Madison Specs is such a great partner for us because you can see what it does for the investors. And as you know, what's our motto? Best interest of the investor, okay? This is a fabulous tool that's been made available. We're certainly going to take advantage of it on your behalf. So, do I anything? I know you got some stuff. Go ahead, Brian. Say, if, seriously, guys, I, I'll, I'll talk to you all day, every day. If you have any questions on your, if you, you think interested in investing and you really want to know more about the taxes, call me. Email me. My card and information is on that, uh, the handout out there. I think we got it out there. Yeah, the handout out on the yeah. table. Yeah, we've got yeah. material for you. And heck, if you guys want me to look at a property, if you want me to, uh, we run free analysis. I could do this, say everything for free for you guys. I want to make sure that nobody pays taxes. It's ridiculous. All right. Just so to the, clarify that again, he runs the example for free. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> when he gets Thank down you. to that doing helps. that whole thing, yes. Then, then there's. Thank you. Well, <laughs> one quick reminder before I turn it over to Darwin here. Just a quick reminder for those of you who are online as well as here. I see a lot of people taking notes. This is being recorded and we'll make it available to everybody on Thursday. So check your newsletter that you get from DGRE on Thursday, and you'll have this the entire thing recorded. And uh, you can go back and watch it over and over and over, no matter how dry you might think it is. It's or fabulous information. So. All right. Thank you. All. Yes, thank you, Brian. Thank, well, thank you. you, Brian. Thank you. We talked a little bit about the, the specific impact. I mean, you got a lot of education now on cost segregation, but we really wanted to boil it down to how it was specifically affected Frankfurt Station. So if you have any questions about that, again, we'll be glad to stay and answer any questions you might have. Uh, but reach out to Garrett and or Julian, and uh, they'll be happy to talk to you about it as well. Hey, go back one again. Oh, sorry. 
back. Sorry. No, one, one more forward. Forward? Oh, there we go. And also, just as a reminder, Garrett came up. That was his first public speaking event. Um, so uh, I think he did pretty good. And, and now we're going to throw him from the, firing pan, uh, from the frying pan into the fire. And he's actually going to host a podcast where he's going to interview me. So please, if you have any questions, you can write those down um, on those cards and give them to Garrett. And, uh, and he can em embarrass me. They can be per personal or business questions. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Okay. We want to yeah. know what his dog's names are. It, it can be absolutely anything, and just like everything, full transparency, I've got no secrets, so I'll talk about any of that also. Um, but go ahead and also reach out to them. And Frankfurt, just to give you a reminder, we're less than a million dollars away from our eight and a half million dollar capital raise in three weeks. So uh, this is a spectacular deal. As you saw, the PPM said 18.4. Um, when I ran my numbers, it was 19. But because of the spectacular management that Brian and his team has been doing, we took over management less than five weeks ago. It was 41% occupied. Now, 67 or 69? Almost 68. 68% occupied in five weeks, went from 41 to 68%. So that changed the whole economics of our transaction. And now our projections are closer to 28% per year which is why we're filling that up so quick. Yes, sir. Do you have a new performer for that? Do we have a new performer for that? No, we do not have a new performer. I'm just telling you what it is because we're not gonna change the PPM. We're not gonna be doing any of that. It's just, uh, it's just how, we, how the numbers change. Just give a heads up. Wendell. Is it just for uh, and it's, it, question is, is it for accredited investors only? It is, it's a 506C, which is accredited investors only. And we did that so we can advertise it. Did anybody hear the, the radio ad we did? Well, I'm glad you guys did. I haven't heard it yet. Um, depends on what radio station you listen to. Yeah, it depends on radio. Yeah, uh, AM660 is where that's running on and advertising that. We can't advertise a 506B. We can only advertise a C, and we want to get some of that out. So, again, um, who's in Frankfurt now? Okay, good. Congratulations. Um, and uh, real quick, is today your birthday? The blonde is going like this. Is today your birthday? It is her birthday. So this is Susan's birthday. So everybody Thirty say happy years birthday, old. Birthday, Susan. <laughs> happy birthday, Susan. Happy birthday. Okay, go to the next one. We are doing something fun. Um, this is really, really a cool deal. We're having a, a passive. A real estate passive wealth summit. And I, I, I always want to do passive first, passive real estate. But we have a couple of people. Has anybody heard of George Ross? Okay, for those of you who don't know who George Ross is, he was the executive VP for Trump Organization. And he was on The Apprentice, if you remember The Apprentice show with him. And he has done some amazing, amazing deals. And he's going to be coming here live to go ahead and speak along with J.T. Fox, who he, he's the world's number one wealth coach and branding expert. He's coming in here to go ahead and talk about business. Before COVID, he was speaking 365 days a year, okay, all over the world. He's got clients and cli thousands of clients all over the world. Every continent, he's got numerous clients, and he coaches some of the biggest people around. Um, I'm part of a few of his groups that he does, and he's also doing uh, part of a founders group with him that people bring investments, and it's kind of like Shark Tank, where we get to go in there and listen to him and decide what we want to invest in and things like that. Very dynamic speaker. Um, Hugh Hilton, anybody heard of Hugh Hilton? And uh, he is absolutely spectacular. He's done a lot of big deals, over $5.5 billion in transactions. So he'll be coming in Zoom. We've also got three or four other surprise guests, which I, I'm not gonna name right now. And we are doing that on May 22nd and 23rd. And because we have very limited space, we are actually doing a seat deposit because even though we only ha we have about 60 people in the room, we had close to 100 people sign up saying they're gonna be here. So we just blacklist them and they're not allowed to invest or anything anymore since they said they're gonna be here and they're not. Um, 
But if interested, um, we've got these forms. Uh, yes, another form, I'm sorry. But it's to hold your seat, it's $100. Because it's gonna cost a lot of money to get them out here to go ahead and speak. And so we wanna make sure that anybody's here um, actually shows up if they say they're gonna be here. So we'll take $100 cash or check, put it in an envelope, we'll give it back to you at the event when you show up. So it's, so it's free to come, but we wanna make sure that people actually have a commitment to showing up. All day on 22nd and 23rd. And I'm gonna be speaking, we've got other real estate professionals speaking, and it's all about building uh, your wealth, building business, uh, your real estate investing, there is a wealth of knowledge. And like I said, I could listen to, I probably listened to George Ross uh, talk for about, I don't know, 10 or 12 hours and, this, and the, the background stories he can give on all the real estate deals, he alone is worth it. And since it's free anyway, why not? Um, so we're doing that, so if anybody's interested, um, grab one of these and we'll put it in an envelope. And like I said, if it's a check, we're just gonna put it in the envelope and give it back to you on the 22nd, 23rd. And this is the first time we're announcing it. We just finalized all this this afternoon. And we'll have other speakers and things like that. So, uh, so it will be a lot of fun. Uh, we're also gonna be giving away um, a $5,000 prize there, by the way, just as, a, as a, another surprise for people that might show up. So, so that's our event then. Like I said, right up here, maybe we just fill it out and we'll hold it for you. Next item is a thank you. <laughs> now, any questions on anything, on Frankfurt, on anything else? Yes, Nikolai. Any updates on the current uh, portfolio? Current portfolio, Brian, you wanna go ahead and handle those? Absolutely. Um, can we talk about it after? I'm just saying the entire portfolio. I mean, that's a lot of properties. No, I just in general. I mean, well, we started doing distributions again. We had put those on hold because of the well, storm. Just, just one month. We took one month off of distributions just to be ultra conservative. Um, yes, you would think that, okay, no, no property is going to be uh, hit harder than $10,000, right? Because that's our deductible. You just don't know. And I, I'll just give you one little example. We don't have any big concerns about it, but... Imagine how many properties were affected and how many adjusters there are. Not one of our properties has seen an adjuster yet. May 22nd, but 23rd is, was on Fix there. everything. Do whatever you want to do. Fix it. You've got to take care of your residents. Absolutely, that's what we want to do. And we are. Just save your receipts and take pictures. Again, just out of an abundance of caution, we skipped one month. It's always in the best interest of the property and the investor. Uh, you guys, but we picked them right up again. And not only did we pick them up, we added another one, which was Southwest. Uh, in March as well. And I'll be glad to give you any other property update specific that you want. Uh, if you want, we talked a little bit about Texas rent relief. We're starting to see some really good news come across for the properties there. And yeah. how much have we collected so far from that? I knew he was going to put me on the spot. A little over $100,000, and that's just for two properties. So that's good news. Yeah, good news. And uh, what the thing that shocked me, again, we told the good, the bad, and the ugly, and this one's a little bit ugly. Oakview, what happened there in the storm? Wow. The problem with Oakview and Gold Creek as well is that Oak, Gold Creek was without property for three full days. Oakview was without property for four full days. Without electric. Without, ele without any power. And it, it really comes down to whether you lost power or not. Those properties who were close to a hospital or close to a police station or fire station, they typically did not lose any power and they pretty much came out unscathed. Those properties that were not close to a hospital, police station, or some vital infrastructure. Rolling blackouts, I know we heard about rolling blackouts. Bull, bull, I'm sorry. There were no rolling blackouts. They picked spots, whatever they wanted, and, but they were without. So the, there's no question that those two were the hardest hit. Um, but again, we have no displaced residents. We were able to put everybody, take care of them immediately. Everybody's still there paying rent, so... Do we have to work through 14 units at Oakview? Absolutely. They need to be rehabbed? Absolutely. And but the reason for that was because we actually shut off the water when the power was, was out, so we didn't have any breaks. However, there was a secondary one that's tied directly into the, um, into the main lines that, power, that, that pressurizes our sprinkler system. So and you that's can't cut that broke. off. And you can't cut that off, exactly. Well, <laughs> it's very difficult. 
Um, but that's what broke in the attic and then flooded. How many units, 14 units? Uh, probably 40 or so got some, some water damage. But Only I mean, 14 really were damaged that we need to do some major rehab. To Darwin's point, it was really the sprinkler systems that were the issue. You can't just turn those off and be proactive like we were with the rest of the water. Uh, however, as soon as they break, guess what? You, they'll let you cut it off. Oh, it's leaking? Cut it off. But then you got to have somebody walking around 24 hours a day, seven days a week on fire watch, which we did. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because uh, I talked to him. He's there in the middle of the night because now you turned off the fire sprinkler suppression system. The power's off. People are using candles and things like that. And so now there's no power to notify the fire department. There's no sprinkler system if there is a fire. So we were required to keep an eye on the property, make sure no fires broke out. 24 hours a day in that weather, of which he personally sat out there all night in his car um, to keep an eye on the property. This is the dedication that Brian has to the properties. <laughs> thank you, Darwin. But it, thank you, Darwin. But it's the staff that did all the work. Staff did it too, but I want to make sure. I mean, it was the whole team, but. It, he himself was out there also is what I wanted to point out. Um, any other questions? Yes, sir. Villa Creek update. Villa Creek update. Oh, Turn around and look at that. Villa Creek update. There. If somebody invested $100,000 in Villa Creek, they're going to expect a $253,000 check back plus all of the distributions they've already gotten. Okay? So we're looking at having that closed by... Another, another three to four weeks, certainly within 30 days. Within about 30 days. So by the end of next month, if you invest 100 grand in Villa Creek, you can expect $253,000 back plus all the distributions and the refinance proceeds, et cetera. That's going to equate to about a 55-0% return. And that's a round number. It could be 45. It could be 60. But roughly 50% uh, per year on that particular property. So, uh, I didn't have that up just for you, Monty, but thanks for asking. Yes, thank you. Teed that up <laughs> for us. Yeah, he was trying to be sneaky by putting the restaurant room code up there and hoping you'd see it. <laughs> but, but we'll plug it anyway because that one's a home run. That one's a home Grand run. Grand slam. Yeah. What else? All right. Kay. Well, thank you so much again. If you're interested, that event's going to be May 22nd and 23rd, so not that far away. And... Uh, our team is still here, so you can talk to everybody. Give Garrett your cards for anything. Garrett, make sure you're up here to get those. And if you're a first timer, if you don't mind, I'd just love to meet oh you. Yeah. Please, if you're first time, just let us shake your hand. Anybody in here for the first introduce time? Introduce ourselves. We'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Thank you. Well, Kip, we've met before. So. Okay. <laughs>